Hello, everybody. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in part one of an eight-part basic training course in Premiere Elements. And in this course, we just want to talk about the basics of the program, how to make it work, how to edit video, how to output your video, how to add some effects, how to add some titles to it, some transitions, basically how to make a video using Premiere Elements. When you first launch the program, you launch into the splash screen, which they call the Elements Hub. From here, we can get to a lot of great information. Along the top are a number of tutorials. These are offered to you randomly, or you can go up here to the search box at the top, and if you want to do a search on how to add titles, for instance, you type in titles, and it will give you access to a number of tutorials for adding titles to your movie. There are also auto creations, which will appear here in the lower left hand corner. This is the program working in the background to sort of create some video and photo projects for you. This happens automatically and uh, once it gets going, you can click on it and it will show you pages and pages of works in progress that you can continue to edit or you can output as is. Now in the lower right hand corner, we have access to the three programs that make up the Elements Suite, the Organizer, which comes with both Photoshop elements and Premiere elements. It is a media file management system, the photo editor if you have Photoshop elements installed, and the video editor. And if I click video editor, that will launch Premiere elements. Now by default, Premiere elements launches into the quick edit workspace. In fact, there's a little splash screen that pops up that uh, asks what you'd like to do. If you see that screen, just check the box to never see it again. It's a totally worthless screen. It has no purpose whatsoever. But here in the quick workspace, we can see we have access to a couple of different workspaces. The quick workspace, a library of guided edits, and the advanced workspace. And the advanced workspace is where we're going to spend most of our time in this course because it's the more professional of the workspaces. Here we have a virtually unlimited number of video and audio tracks, and here we have a large library of effects and transitions. You'll see once we're over here in the quick workspace, things are a lot simpler and we have a limited library and a limited number of tracks. In fact, only one video track and a track to add music underneath it. But let's start up a project and in Premiere Elements starting a project is as simple as adding media to your timeline. To add media to your timeline, go up here to the upper left hand corner and select add media. We can come through the elements organizer, the data or the media management tool that comes with the program, or we can go to files and folders and simply open up our computer's media browser. From here, I'm just gonna select holding down the shift key, the first and the last in a series and add five clips to my timeline. I want you to notice that in quick mode, those media files are going to go directly to the timeline. In the more advanced mode, they behave a little bit differently, but we'll get to that in a moment later in the course. When you add clips to your timeline, quite often you get this warning that says there's a mismatch between the properties of the media itself and your timeline. The program can change that automatically for you. I know that there are certain times when you're going to want certain aspect ratios for your videos. You want them to fit on a social media site like Instagram or Facebook, and you want them something other than the shape of the video itself, or you're editing video from your phone in which the phone was held upright and you want the video taller than wide. There are ways to access that that I'll show you a little bit later in the course. But for the most part, when you add media, you let the program go ahead and match the properties of that media. Once it's on your timeline here, we can deselect it and just grab a clip and drag it to different positions. We can also trim the clips. So for instance, this first clip here is 13 seconds long. If I go to the lower right hand corner and click on the film strip, I have access to Smart Trim. And here in Smart Trim, I can trim the clip. I can cut off unnecessary footage from the beginning or the end. Or I can even select more than one segment of this clip. And from this 13 second clip, when I go back into continue editing here in the lower right hand corner, you see my 13 second clip is now eight seconds long with only the area that I isolated in it. Between each of the clips on the timeline are little placeholders for transitions. I can go over to the toolbar on the right and select the transitions library. And here I can drag transitions right between any clips. 
Now there are ways to modify the transitions. We'll look at that later in the course. But for now, we've added now transitions between each of the clips. And to access the properties for those transitions, all we need to do is just click on the transition and uh, click on the more button. And we can get to the transitions properties. You notice that we've only got one video track that makes it a little difficult to add titles. Titles are always attached to the clips in quick mode. So here in quick mode, if I select a clip, you notice I have the option to add a title to it by clicking on the little T above the clip here on the timeline. And I can add text, say the arrival. I can select that text and using the properties window over to the right, I can change the properties of it. I can make it, for instance, larger. I can change its color. I can change its font. And I can change its position. And we'll talk about titles and the properties of titles later on in this course. But I can't have a title that overlays two clips on the timeline. Each title is attached directly to the clips, very different in advanced mode. Here in quick mode, that's what you're limited to. We can also add music. If I click on the add music button underneath these clips on the timeline, it opens up the scores library. Scores are a special kind of music track that kind of modifies itself to the timeline and will fit to any length or duration you'd like. But if you click on the little folder next to the add music button, it opens up the browser where you can add your own music track to the movie. Once your movie is all edited and once it's all in order and once you've got it properly trimmed, you just go up to export and share in the upper right hand corner and it launches a tool for exporting your file as a video. But as I say, quick view is a fairly simple and efficient area to edit a video. You'll notice when I go over to the advanced mode, I get a warning saying, once you go to advanced mode, you can't really come back. That's because advanced mode can do many more things than quick mode can. But let's go ahead and continue over to advanced view. And here at advanced view, we have a virtually unlimited number of video and audio tracks, as well as a much larger library of effects, music, transitions, and titles. But we'll learn more about that as we continue with our course. I hope you'll join me for all eight sessions here of our eight part basic training for Adobe Premiere Elements. I'm Steve Grizzetti. I wrote the moviepix.com guide, and I hope to see you in part two of this course.